Cheers, guys. Epics 911. Welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for Thursday, December 15th, 2016. Let's jump right into VR, guys. A uh, quick bit of preamble. Uh, caught up on some of the requests that I had for stuff. The last two games, as an example. Uh, some of you may be wondering, where the hell's the forum? Uh, all signed up. Still constructing. It has just been, again, a very, very busy week at work. I was originally going to go on vacation yesterday. Too much on my plate. I've had to basically extend my work days to make Friday, tomorrow my last day. And all that means is, you know what? Instead of showing up back at work January 3rd, I show up on the 5th. Plus, it means I have more time with my touch controllers when they hopefully arrive next week. All right, let's talk about the first news story. This one was all over today. Originally, a NeoGAF forum member who spotted this as he was looking through Nintendo patents filed and came across a Nintendo Switch mega patent that included, among other things, the ability to convert the device, or rather use the tablet-style device in a VR HMD. Now, the HMD very much looks like the Gear VR variety, uh, where you're putting a phone in, or a tablet, and using it that way, with mentions of tracking capabilities in the device, etc. Now, just because a patent was filed, and we've said this before, and most of you are probably aware of that, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to translate to anything ever. It's just a thing companies do to protect themselves. Uh, in the event they do want to create that functionality, they have that patent to kind of fall back on. And you know what? Even having a patent, at the end of the day, if it goes to trial with somebody who maybe filed something sooner... Uh, it could still not end up being effective. So, But anyways, it's pretty much standard operating procedure to do that. So it's at least nice to think they considered the possibility. And maybe it's a case where they're just sitting back to see what unfolds with VR uh, over the course of 2017 to decide if it's something they'd want to pursue. So for those of you that are... Uh, Huge Nintendo fans, definitely some possibility. Uh, certainly, it's better than them, them saying not likely. At least it's a patent showing they've given it some thought. All right, next news piece. How game mechanics change in virtual reality. And the article from Upload VR is talking about standard tried and true game mechanics and how they've altered in VR. Basically, four categories that they talk about the first one, movement system limitations. And of course, the main limitation has to do with something we've talked about a lot on this channel, motion sickness, and how to accommodate that. And if you look at games that have eliminated smooth movement, raw data, Arizona sunshine, a lot of times you're seeing that they've used a mechanic. Uh, it might not be smooth, but it's still functional. And I've pretty much been saying since the start of this VR aspect of the channel that I think there should be multiple forms of locomotion in every VR game. I understand from a price point of view, I'm not saying it has to be two completely separate locomotion systems, but if you're going to do something like teleportation, maybe tweak that to allow, you know, something more akin, more like smooth movement for those of us who don't have motion sickness. And I think we are going to start seeing that. I think that will be a natural thing. They're going to want to cater. Nobody wants to purposely split their market potential in half. Uh, you know, by offering something that's not popular with half of the people buying the game. So, uh, yeah, it's neat because you can see something like Doom VR. It got people sick. But holy crap, does the smooth motion mechanic work in that game? And look, there's some where teleportation works perfectly well. I think raw data is one of those. I think it actually helps that game more than smooth movement may. Whereas other games, 
could probably benefit from it. I think Arizona Sunshine is an example of a game where smooth movement or the ability to do that for us as an option would benefit that game. They also talk next, they talk about ways to avoid movement system limitations. Now again, the motion sickness kind of spurred on the teleportation, one of the first uh, gallery and of course budget cuts to showcase the teleportation aspect. Well, budget cuts took that concept further and actually worked it in as a game mechanic. You never feel when you're playing budget cuts demo or the game that, you know, it's something they threw in so that people wouldn't get motion sick. Not at all. It feels like part of the game, an actual mechanic, the way they've handled it. It's a big part of the game moving around and how you move around. So absolutely agree with that. Then they talk about body ergonomics and tracking systems. And you think about it, there is stuff that is just basically we take for granted. The big one I'm going to talk about right after this in the, in the last category, but grabbing an item and putting it to your mouth, right? I.e. the Pac-Man power pill. Gobbling up that power pill to have special abilities for a limited amount of time. That's something that's so natural to us as humans. See a food object, pick it up, hold it to your mouth. That's an example of what VR can do very well. And then there's other stuff that's a bit more tricky. It depends on, you know, uh, the tracking system. And that stuff like your ducking or your lateral movements, those types of things. And this is going to tie into a story, a couple of new stories ahead, but I'll mention it when I get there. The body ergonomics and tracking system, they're actually pretty damn advanced, even right now. Even though we talk about, I can't wait, I can't wait till this, this, and that. If we actually stop and take a look at what we have available to us right now, Tracking is pretty damn good, you know, some of the solutions notwithstanding, but certainly you look at the Rift and the Vive and they have very competent tracking systems that can only get better, which is amazing. All right, and then the, the, the last category was motion controller possibilities. One of the most overlooked mechanics, in my opinion, VR, is the simple act of holding a weapon and either swinging it or, if it's a gun, lining it up with your target and shooting. Something we've not been able to do with anything except maybe light guns for arcade cabinets or a console system, right? But they were always very gimmicky. In VR, it's an actual mechanic. Any VR game that shoots requires you to actually really aim. Uh, they may dumb it down with auto aim assist, that type of thing, but you're actually holding a weapon, putting it up, lining up your shot, and taking your shot, which is something, again, we pretty much take for granted, but if you think about just that, the ability to do just that within a couple of years from not to now, it's pretty mind-blowing. Next news story, HTC Vive. Executive China Regional President, uh, of course I speak about Alvin Graylin, he was on stage at the Usian, uh, Unity Vision Summit uh, last week and he made several virtual reality predictions. I'm just going to cherry pick a few, that some of them were pretty cool, uh, some perhaps a little bit optimistic because of course he's in a position where he has to be and always be marketing savvy and marketing sensitive, but let's talk about them regardless. So some of his 2017 predictions uh, that the gaming library for PC VR games is going to grow to 10,000 plus titles, uh, PCs that are VR ready by fourth quarter in 2017 are going to outsell regular PCs. I think that one is hugely freaking ambitious and in my opinion, probably not realistic, but hey dude, shoot for the sky, Elvin. Uh, mobile VR sales to exceed 50 million. And this next one basically has David Blaine written all over it. Someone is going to spend 30 plus days inside VR nonstop. And if I had to put money on a guy, it would probably be Blaine because how many of his public stunts have been exactly that? Suspended in a cage, put in a block of ice, whatever, right? It's all about how long he can do that for. 
The 28 prediction movies, uh, these ones a little bit more interesting. Uh, we've talked about VR, so I won't get into that, but um, uh, all key retailers begin offering VR shopping models. VR social solutions get traction and become exceedingly sticky. And again, like the other time uh, earlier when I said, think about this story, it's going to tie in. This point, think about it too. This will tie in. And then the other prediction for 2018 was a high quality virtual reality MMORPG that's going to release, become an instant hit, and rewrite all the rules for massively multiplayer online games. As addicting as WoW and EverQuest were for me, if somebody was to nail a virtual reality version of that, yeah, I could see myself taking vacation time probably just to play. That's, that's how excited I would be about that. Next news story, Riv VR, R-I-V VR, uh, brings wireless VR to the Rift and to the Vive. This news piece comes from TechCrunch. The author, Lucas Matney, had a chance to trial this wireless unit, the Riv VR, uh, via the HTC Vive HMD, and he said it was amazing. The company is using a proprietary technology. They're not trying to do the standard compress uh, compressed HDMI. Uh, what they're able to do is compress, using this proprietary technology, a smaller video fe uh, feed that amounts to basically 40 to 80 megabits of information, which is amazing. The device weighs about 300 grams. Uh, they didn't commit on a price, but the CEO you know, kind of hinted that it would be in the $200 to $300 range. It's also going to have two models, a three-hour battery life one and a six-hour battery life one. And what's interesting, and Lucas mentioned this, is is wireless going to be able to keep pace with resolution? Because one of the things he talks about is not just the march to 4K, but hell, let's get really ambitious, let's talk 6K per eye, <laughs> is wireless going to be able to keep pace? Kind of like a Moore's Law. We'll have to wait and see. But I do think they can nail current technology. Not sure they're going to be able to keep pace, but it'll sure as hell be fun to watch them try. All right, this is the article that I was talking about earlier. Uh, Tim Sweeney believes that VR and digital humans will make... Elon Musk's Hyperloop irrelevant. And what he's talking about is not that travel is going to become irrelevant, but that a lot of casual travel is probably going to be greatly reduced because of the enhanced social capabilities of virtual reality. There was a mind-blowing segment. I got the link. You got to check this video out. It's a, a game that Epic is programming called Hellblade. There's an actress. Her name is Melina. She's being captured in real time. A Serbian tech company took 100 plus facial expressions uh, from Melina herself and basically incorporated those into the Unreal 4 engine. And the results are just amazing. She in real time is acting the scene out. And on the other screen, you're watching it digitized in real time. That is where Tim believes VR social is going. Avatars that can accurately mimic human expression. There's something called the Uncanny Valley. They don't talk about it in the article if you go looking for it, but I will supply a link. It basically has to do with how sensitive we as humans are to artificial facial expressions, right? Uh, or rather, robot facial expressions or CGI that there's something that makes it so that we can detect that. We're very sensitive to that. And Tim believes firmly that we're going to get to a point where there is no uncanny valley. We fly right over that freaking valley and are able to have social experiences with people with real body languages that really can convey tone. So, damn. And he ends his little thing with... In 15 years, there will be 4 billion devices out there capable of making this happen. 4 billion people will be able to basically teleport. And of course, in the figurative sense, like I said, 
not the literal, well, I guess literal in the sense that you're going into VR, but yeah, mind absolutely blown. All right, guys, that's it for the news. As always, cheers, and definitely catch you guys on the VR flip side.